Okay, so this is going to be the final night of what are you saying? And it's the, the Lord, of the Lord's Prayer. And we tonight we start with, well, let, let's let's just do a, an upfront thing about prayer again because it really it's significant throughout. And so remember the the Aramaic word for prayer is slotha, and it means to to tune in or or set a trap, to set your mind like a trap and wait patiently to catch the thoughts or counsel of God. Hold on. Oh, pardon me. Oh. Excuse me. Okay, so in praying, it is more important to listen to the voice of God than to repeat words and tell God what he should do and what he has not done, which is very typical of what normally um, and traditionally we do. We, we decide, okay, now this is what I'm going to do. I've made my decision. And then we pray um, and, and tell God, okay, you know, uh, help me, God. This is the, I've made this decision when God might not, that might not be the plan. So anyway, but the key, the key to all of this, the Lord's prayer, but all praying is to listen and to catch the, the counsel or the guidance of God. And so the interesting, the other interesting thing about the Lord's Prayer is that it encompass, encompasses the heart of Jesus' teachings. In other words, if you if you go through, especially if you go through Ma Matthew chapter uh, chapters five through seven, those are pretty much all the teachings of Jesus. And um, and. When we've gone through the Lord's Prayer, we've focused on many of those teachings because it's all wrapped up here in the Lord's Prayer. Okay, so tonight we are we're starting with all right the 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 usual um, the usual thing that everyone says is lead us not into temptation. However, that this is the classic mistranslation from the of the Lord's Prayer. It is, do not let us enter into temptation. Why? Because God tempts no one. And the God, the loving God, the loving parent, does not lead anyone into temptation. So, um, and and one of one of the backup scriptures here happens to be from James one, uh, thirteen and fourteen. Let no man say when he is tempted, "I am tempted of God," for God cannot be tempted with evil; neither does He tempt any man. But. This is important, but every man is tempted by his own lust. He covets and is enticed. So um, God leads no one into temptation. Rather, he helps, sustains, and delivers those who are tempted with material things of this life and the things of the flesh um and and we have another um this is a famous verse um and this was um jesus right before he was he was arrested um and the disciples were in the garden of gethsemane and he said awake and pray that you may not enter into temptation and the spirit is indeed ready but the body is weak and so 
the emphasis, doc, Dr. Lanza, like I told you before, uh, much of this is um, that, that we've done on the Lord's Prayer does come from Dr. Lamsa. And, um, but the important thing here is that temptation, or you can, you, you can call it trials or difficulties, come from materialism or worldliness. If you, if you, um, <clears throat> if you, uh, Think about that a, a, a little bit. That is, and God doesn't, see, God doesn't create evil. And God did not create a being called Satan. Um, and that's that's what we blame a lot of uh, our problems and whatnot on Satan. But there is no being called Satan. Um, God did not create a being called Satan. And Satan is just is just <clears throat> means to miss 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 the mark or to be deceived, deceiving. And so uh anyway, that that's an important thing to, to remember there. And so what we're what we're forced, what we're what we have to do in this life is we have to keep a balance between our well the spiritual principles but our 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 spiritual life and material things now and we talked about this a little bit because the material material things come into play in almost almost everything here but um in our world today i mean material Material things, uh, stuff, it does dominate our lives. And keeping keeping within the the spiritual principles, the teachings of Jesus and whatnot, it's it is tough to do. But here we're just asking, we're just asking God and saying, you know, um, help me to not enter into temptation and so and how do we resist temptation all right well we go back to we go back to the um let your counsel come thy kingdom come okay um so so we we go we go back to that because if you if you um, if you're listening, like we just talked about with the prayer, and you're hearing God, God's counsel, um, then that's how that's how you will be. That's how you can be helped from getting into the temptation, and and help to resist that temptation. And so it all falls back again on. Community, communing with God, who is your, who is your father, who is all of our uh, father, parent, beloved. Okay, um, so we we listen, we get, and it, if we're, you know, if you're if you're looking at like something that's tempting you, and you know, you know, it's. It's just, you just you just turn and you, you just you just say in your mind you don't even have to say it out loud uh wait a minute okay let me see what, what's my what's my counsel from God and that will that will help you and of course that's the whole this following God's counsel and God's guidance is it's 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 the mission it's the total mission of Jesus. Um, and, and, and it's emphasized, it's emphasized here in, in the Lord's prayer too. So, so when you're tempted to do whatever, you know, just think about that. And, and, you know, um, it, sometimes it just comes down to a gut feeling, 
yeah. when you know and, and it's you know you're you're going to just go do something by god i'm going to go do that but you have that little you know that little gut feeling and you don't so but it's do not let us enter into temptation not lead us not into temptation okay um and um and of course the next line is deliver us we we always say deliver us from evil um many people will say deliver us from error or difficulties and basically what, what we're looking at here is keep us out of trouble okay we, you know help us to not be tempted and and keep us keep us out of trouble um you know uh divert us from from what we're going to do that we shouldn't do so or help us follow your guidance before we make mistakes but if we make mistakes guide us so that we can correct our mistakes and learn from them so basically that's that's what we're saying when we say deliver deliver us from evil deliver us from error um and it doesn't the um it, it's 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 better here from Aramaic to use to use the word the error or difficulties because when you talk about evil and you say evil immediately people are thinking Satan like I just said you know uh, Satan and deliver us from you know Satan and and the evil we 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 many times um many times attribute uh evil to satan something outside of us something outside of humankind but we create the evil okay if you if you, that's the way you want to talk about it but but it's talking about error and difficulty okay we're gonna have a short class tonight I, I apologize but I was running on our steam okay and for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever now that forever and ever really translate from from ages to ages it's for all ages for all time all right and uh interesting thing about this is that this line um this line was added okay um to the original prayer and that many times there there are there were many times in the bible where um where and i have it marked in mind because we went because when we studied with dr erico um we went through all this and that what was this jesus or was this not jesus and whatnot but um but it was but it was added later now just a little example um and i don't know if any of you know the catholic religion or whatever but um when when i was young uh that's what my mother was catholic and so i basically was but i remembered okay and, and because i have been i have been around some other catholics uh lately and um and i heard them saying the prayer well early on and i guess it was many years ago now um the Catholics, if you were Catholic, you did not say this. This was not part of the prayer. 
for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. However, when I lately, j just recently, I heard some Catholics praying, and it is now in their prayers. So it only it just adds to the, you know, to the to this study and whatnot. Here that this line, this line was added later. Uh, why? Who knows? It's a it's a scholarly thing, I believe, or a scribal thing. So, but basically, we're saying that God, the beloved. Father, and you could substitute the word parent here, remember that, is the one power from whose love and guidance comes all good. And of course, God's kingdom, which is now we'll talk a little bit about that, is the ever is the only everlasting kingdom. Okay, why? All right, now remember. God, God's kingdom is a spiritual kingdom, okay? God is spirit, okay? And remember, we did God is everywhere throughout the universe. God is in us, and God is in all things. So, and the fact that God is spirit, it doesn't go away. It's everlasting. And then let, let's go a little further because I don't I didn't didn't have a whole lot tonight, but let, let's go a little further talking about the spirit. Okay. We're talking about a spiritual kingdom because God is spirit. Okay. Now we also are spirit okay we are made in the image and likeness of god so our spirit remember we are a let's see if i get this quote right we are a spiritual being having a human experience or whatever but think about this um we are body and we are spirit. We're physical and part and spirit. Now, the physical part of us is not everlasting. Okay. Um, but that speaks to duality. Okay. Well, that's fine. God is one. God is all. Exactly. There's nothing yes. more than all. And God is spirit. Therefore, there is only spirit. Exactly. And therefore, the belief in a material body in materiality is just a belief it's false it it's not true no, right I, although it's um it, it but we are well well let's just let's just put it this way okay we are phys physically we have a physical body but it is the spirit, okay? The spirit part of us, all right? And what I'm, what I'm getting to, what I'm getting to is that um, the, the message, you know, the, the message that, that the spiritual, God's spirit, okay, as well as our spirit lives on, okay? Um, and people, they, they, they say, I'll say this all the time, but there's not a recognition necessarily of this, this kind of belief, but, um, that many people say, okay, well, your loved one died, dies and, and then what the spirit lives on. And so, so I guess what I'm saying is that our spirits, because it is spirit, our spirit it does. We we live on, okay. And when you know, and when we die, um, our physical body is yeah kaput, but the spirit, the spirit lives on, and that that's part of 
you know, I mean, yes, understanding that God is spirit is another um, thing that is not is not understood by by many. But when we're talking about the the everlasting kingdom, yes, it's God's everlasting kingdom. Um, our and material things, you know, think about this. We we work so hard to get material things that when that well, they don't last either. They're gone. When we go, when we die, they're they're gone. So, um, I I just thought I would toss that in uh, with regard to this. Uh, but yes, there there is <laughs> there is only one power, and and the other thing. Remember when we say this, God is good. Okay, God is spirit, yes, but God is love and so so you can't you 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 can't get any bad guidance from god and um so anyway just wanted to emphasize emphasize that because it all fits together and it's all found right here in, in the lord's prayer um but you know conceptually it, it it's difficult for some from <clears throat> traditional settings. So, all right, now let's. Oh, we have to. We have Amen. Now, the interesting thing about Amen is that Amen itself is actually an Aramaic word. So, when you say Amen at the end of anything you're saying Aramaic, you're speaking Aramaic, because that is an Aramaic word. And But the, the amen basically means, okay, whatever you're saying here, whatever you, or whatever you're saying, what it's a prayer or whatever, that you will back it up. It's like being signed, sealed, and delivered. And that's the meaning of Amen or Amen, however, however you say it, but that's the meaning that comes that comes from Aramaic. So let's we're gonna we're gonna just now go over. Uh, we're gonna go over the things that we talked about and, and these principles <laughs> that are found here in in the Lord's Prayer. God is everyone's beloved parent um, and remember this takes away uh, many many people have had the problem with god being father and you know a feminist thing but no all right beloved okay god is the beloved parent and 